goes into other stuff but quite linked so it's up to you if you guys want to hear the whole thing on here or we could just pinch seven minutes or so and if you want to you can hear the rest later um let me know um what you guys think about that um we got a biased five by five downstairs <laughs> um all good in the hood um steve thank you mate so that's good excellent so you can see and hear me that's brilliant right we got a few people um coming into the chat i appreciate this isn't going to be a good time to do it because it's easter sunday so there we go it is what it is so loud and clear thank you very much for that um confirmation jrd spot on right okay yes now this this is from this guy who's been blowing the whistle about what's been going on with billionaires with these bunkers um i've already done a video on this i think it was a live stream actually about a month ago something like that so you're more than welcome to go through my videos and to see what i talked about there because there's a lot more information regarding what billionaires are doing it and where they're doing it and how much it's all costing this ha, this has moved on a level they look like they are preparing for collapse when we are talking about sorry i've made lots of notes here we've got people coming in awesome um yes about some of the things which are going on right now this does appear to be heating up could this be the real deal coming down the road why would people spend so much money building bunkers maybe they might not need it maybe they would it's a lot of money to build a really good high quality bunker so yeah it does um beg a belief um right so yes um 366 that's pretty cool so let me see um yes everything's set up right so we're good brilliant thank you for everyone to um who are joining on board awesome right the guy um, we are going to be listening to is this guy his name is douglas rushkoff okay now it's really fascinating when he goes into this story that he flew out to this secret location in the desert in america for five tech billionaires and they've basically been picking his brains about where to put bunkers what to invest in all of the rest of it this guy is, is pretty much um cutting edge is way ahead and this is the guy in question okay so we're going to be listening to um, a section of an interview which is only just aired um his name is douglas wishkoff as we said um which is checking in the comments now um awesome uh we got rosa saying they've got cities on the ground yes i know absolutely <clears throat> there is more going on under our feet than we realize that's fact you ask any archaeologist that be surprised at the stuff they've been uncovering um they've been you'd be surprised about the contractors who are working underground who have been coming home and speaking to their wives and partners about what they're doing and what they're seeing and sometimes this trickles out it's incredible but nonetheless billionaires are spending a fortune right now and for the last year it's really ramped up so we're going to be getting into that real soon right we got nearly 500 john good to see you from brecon mate um hope you're well so sweet we're just checking everything out so billionaires basically they seem how bent on living forever and as we know we can't not to how we understand but they seem to believe that with all of that money all of that access to technology they believe that they can live forever in some way it's really bizarre so when you when we're going to listen to this video together um it really does make you think gee they are pouring shed loads into having bunkers on the ground it's crazy um also they are investing in cryo now we've all seen science fiction films where you you get frozen and then in, in the future you get thawed out and you know technology is advanced and then maybe at that time you can like have x x amount of transplants and you could literally live forever so they are investing in it already this isn't science fiction anymore this is happening there believe it or not there are companies right now that can freeze you when you die and then thaw you out whenever they exist 
it's not science fiction films anymore i know how many of you um feel like you've gone to sleep and you've woken up in some weird sci-fi nightmare it's a bit bizarre isn't it exactly it's crazy but also they are investing in bunkers security long-term food etc i worked at a shop not that long ago and every now and again you would get like um a guy who wanted to remain really private etc ordering years worth of freeze-dried food there's freeze-dried food that will last 40 50 years way more than the average customer there's people out there serious clout who are doing this right now it's crazy it really is crazy but not only that where to put your bunker let me know in the live chat right now if you was a multi-billionaire and you had unlimited money and it didn't really make a difference about spending anything really whereabouts on the planet would you put a bunker obviously it's going to be deep underground all sorts of things to consider what about inside the mountain there's lots of room underneath you that makes sense and if it floods everywhere you're going to be quite high up where the entrance is seems plausible what sort of rock underneath would it make any difference whether it's limestone whether it's hard granite etc obviously it's going to be quicker to mine and drill for instance elon musk actually owns a company called the boring company that's true and is heavily involved in underground bunker building that's fact if you don't believe me go and check it out glass talked about it in some videos before but it's true so obviously the softer the stone the quicker it is to hollow out areas to build we're talking palaces an immense amount of value and stuff going on for these billionaires okay it's nuts and you think i'm making all this up stick around then you might learn something i am not making this up this is not of bullshit it's crazy what they're doing it really is so where would you put it now in this interview which we're going to listen to real quick now okay we're just waiting for a decent amount of people to enter the chat because i want all of us to listen to at least the first eight minutes of this um interview which this guy he was literally speaking out about this with these um billionaires okay it's crazy so where would you put a bunker um antarctica yeah fair shout the peak district switzerland yeah deep on the ground in new zealand yeah do you know what believe it or not that was one of the other ones someone's put it's true i've seen his boring side yeah elon musk is a little bit different isn't he some say he's not even human but that's another story um some area in eastern russia okay north pole buxton <laughs> apparently so i don't know why i laughed antarctica africa um anti-arctic bunker new zealand antarctica so antarctica and new zealand seem quite high up on what you guys are saying up north well to be honest if anything kicks off there's no one up north anyway so you've got a lot of freedom out there right okay we just passed 666 in the chat do you know what should we just roll vt now i think so yeah so we're going to listen to this guy okay um and we're going to have a little chat after this little interview okay so please stick around and if you join um 10 minutes from now wind it back a bit we're um currently nine minutes into the live stream um so yeah put the slider to nine minutes and then we can listen to this interview right okay you guys ready sure okay listen to what this insider has to say about all of this this is just dropped well it it's strange you know i mean i'm some kind of you know tech and society expert so i get called in for lots of things i've been right about a ton of stuff i'm not in business but you know i i've got my ear to the tracks and know the future in some ways so i get invited to do these talks usually kind of about the future of technology the future of digital business and I thought I was getting invited to another one of those, and I don't even like doing them, but they offered so much money that I, I agreed, and they flew me out business class to this, this resort way, way, way out in the desert. It was so far that my plane was like, it was like a two or three hours drive from my airport to this resort, but the resort had this like landing strip next to it where the guys are landing in their G5s and all. So it was a, a, a an exclusive kind of event, and I really prepared because I wanted to tell them what was wrong with the tech industry and what they're doing and all, and I'm waiting in the green room to go on to do the talk, 
And, you know, I'm waiting for the guy. You know how they come out with the, usually with the little clip-on microphone and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> well, five guys come in in, the, in these, like, Patagonia kind of uh, fleece shirts, and they sit around the table where I'm getting ready, and that's my audience. It's just five tech billionaires, well, a couple of, you know, tech investors, but basically five tech billionaires who are peppering me with these really kind of yes or no binary questions. They don't want to hear my talk. They're like, first, they're like, you know, what should we invest in, virtual reality or augmented reality or, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum? And I'm not the guy to ask that, right? I, I would have said Betamax, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I do, I'm right, but I'm wrong, right? I'm right in the idea, but I, I don't, I don't pick the right business, uh, which is fine. But then, yeah, you know, so they're going back and forth with all these questions. And finally, one of them says, uh, Alaska or New Zealand, and I'm like, what? And he's like, what's the better place for a bunker, given you know climate change and uh, uh, pandemics? Uh, uh, p- possible nuclear problems, economic unrest, uh, refugee crisis. What's the safer place, safer bet overall? And they, they, they wanted advice about their bunkers, right? about their survival strategies. They were all preparing for what they called the event, right? the electromagnetic pulse or nuclear war or climate change or, that renders the Earth unlivable and forces them to retreat either into a, a, a bunker or to upload their consciousness to the cloud or to go you know, seasteading out in the ocean or to get to Mars or to become an AI. And I'm like, oh, my God, really? You know, so I entered entertained their idea for a while. I half thought they were joking. And one of them pulled out plans for his, his, his bunker that he was building. And I'm looking, there's like a, a, a heated pool under the ground, the, these shipping containers he's going to put under the ground. And I'm, I, I say, uh, uh, you know, my neighbor's got a heated pool and there's a truck out there all the time. You know, all the parts keep going. How are you going to make new parts for your heated pool in the apocalypse? And he opens his little moleskin book and he writes, oh, you know, parts for the pool, it's like, like he hadn't thought of it. And finally, I was asking them, how are you, if you've got these bunkers and the rest of us don't, how are you going to protect yourself from the rest of us? And one of them said, oh, well, you know, I've hired, you know, a dozen Navy SEALs to come out and protect the, the, the facility, Jeez. you know, in the, in the event of a crisis. They're like waiting, you know, they've got, you know, fully fueled helicopters and they'll be there in an instant. I'm like, all right, so you've got Navy SEALs in your apocalypse bunker compound, you know, and how exactly are you going to pay your Navy SEALs to protect you once your money is worthless? And they're, well, their jaws drop. Like, these are the smartest guys in the world. They hadn't even thought of this. I'm like, yeah, your Bitcoin, you know, your crypto is not going to be worth anything if society collapses. Why aren't they just going to take over the whole place from you? And then they spend the whole next hour, they're just debating what could they do to maintain control of their security force. So one of them says, well, you know, what if I'm the only guy that knows the combination to the lock where we keep the food? It's like, oh, well, Navy SEALs don't have any experience getting information out of people, right? You can just spend the entire... And are these billionaires, Douglas, thinking long-term or short-term? Well, it's odd. On the one hand, they're thinking long-term, right? Because they think they're thinking out beyond the repercussions of their technologies. They know they've screwed it up. They know their technologies are making people crazy. You know, they, they know where their the resources, they, they, they understand, or they understand uh, uh, that there's a great probability of bad stuff happening. You know, the nation states are weird. They're, so they, 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 they're thinking long, longer term than most of us in that they're looking ahead you know, 10, 20 years to what they think is going to be the collapse, but they're not thinking genuinely long-term. If you talk to any true self-respecting prepper, what's the first thing they're going to say is get your neighbors prepared, right? You don't want to be a lone prepper. The first thing that any self-respecting prepper does is make sure every neighbor on his block has food and water and protection So because we're going to need- So they don't attack them. Right. You're going to come like that Twilight Zone. You know, That's right. The, 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 the shelter. Remember that? Right. 
the shelter. Exactly. It's like, haven't they watched that? But they, they think, and this is their, their hubris, right? They're tech pros. They're billionaires. They think they can go it alone. They think that they're going to be the one, you know, to get to Mars and have a dome. They're going to be the one who has, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's got his place in Hawaii. Peter Thiel has his in New Zealand. You know, that somehow they're going to keep the rest of us out or whatever it is that they're afraid of. Somehow they're going to think their way out of it. They've got, you know, the, the techno, technology Technological solution, but you know, for me, what it revealed was these guys, this 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 tech bro mentality, where they think they can earn enough money to insulate themselves from the reality they're creating by earning money in that way, right? Like they can make a car that goes fast enough to escape from its own exhaust, and it just doesn't work like that. You know, and do they think of the ramifications of what happens afterwards? hard part. You know, I don't think they really do. They think they're going to somehow sort of wait it out. You know, they'll wait out 50 years or 100 years. I don't think I don't think any of them are really thinking that they're going to get into their shelter and live there forever. That that's the new civilization. Who wants to? You know, well, I think a lot of them want to. A lot of there's a there's a whole movement, you know, their their, their version of long termism, or what they call you know effective altruism and effective acceleration. They have all these names for it. It's it's really a version of transhumanism, but a very dark one, where they think that that all of us regular people, uh, regular squishy pink and brown human beings on the planet, we're like the larval stage, you know, like the maggot stage of a fly, and that they are the ones who are actually going to get to the next phase of human evolution. They're going to get, you know, whatever those virtual wings are that let them upload their consciousness into the cloud. So there we go. I could literally, literally just play the whole um, interview. Incidentally, I just noticed in the chat there as I was watching it um, tick up. Um, if you want to watch or straight listen to the whole interview, it's only 20 odd minutes long. But there's a link to that right under this video. So you can go show more underneath and it's the first link. Click on that and you've got the whole thing. So this is what connects. Uh, and like I said, I could have played all of it. But um you know, we're just going to be here all day and we've got stuff to talk about because some of the key points that were mentioned in that interview were quite interesting. So did you remember some of the things he was saying that these billionaires are prepping for, like climate change? Now, if you really are that naive to believe that climate change, um, coastal areas are going to be underwater, etc., I think personally that's bullshit. Why would lots of people continue to buy property on coastal resorts, including millionaires and billionaires. If it was someone had a heads up of what's coming and we're all going to be underwater around coastal areas because of climate change, you know, <laughs> I really don't believe in it myself. I don't know what you guys think about, um, you know, the sun um, is melting the ice caps and the sea levels are rising and all coastal areas are going to be underwater. Um, so to stop that happening, we're going to spray loads of crap up in the sky to make it cloudy. So there's not much sun come through to the planet's surface to heat up the ice to melt it. OK. I think it's all bullshit. I really think it's all bullshit. I really, really do. If they stop spraying that crap into the atmosphere, the sea levels are still not going to rise anyway, in my own opinion. But nonetheless, they love spending trillions of dollars pounds to try and promote the idea that that's what's happening and it seems to be scaring some billionaires into the place where they need to build a shelter somewhere or a bunker because all of their properties on malibu etc are going to be underwater in a year or two really do you believe <laughs> in all of that so yeah climate change we're going to be building bunkers because we're scared of climate change i think that's just ridiculous i think that's ridiculous myself um social breakdown yeah that's probably one of the most likeliest scenarios of why it would be probably beneficial and safer to build a bunker because at some point we are going to witness some form of societal breakdown the way things are going 
it seems like it's just a matter of time and i wouldn't want to put a date on it i think it would be foolhardy too i mean who really knows what date or what week everything's going to start coming down big time there's all sorts of um, scenarios i mean heck even the live stream i've done on friday night okay what did we talk about um cern some of you guys remember what I was talking about there. CERN uh, in um, Switzerland, stroke France, um, is going to be operational for the first time in ages on the eclipse. Why? Very strange. There's all sorts of weird stuff going on with CERN. Uh, NASA are going to be shooting free rockets into the moon on the eclipse day. The entire, well, almost the entire um, rationale of National Guard have been put on duty across the United States of America. They have been told, the American public in some areas, no cell phones will be available to expect power outs, or in UK we call power cuts, um, to stock up on food, to stock up on water, fuel, and supplies for at least one week. Now, most of us, I don't know, I guess, have seen a solar eclipse when you saw that solar eclipse, do you remember anything like that happening at the same time? To my knowledge, this is the first time ever that this has happened. Why? Why is it? If you, I'll tell you what, look, if you don't believe me, let's have a look. Because I know there's, always, I've already blocked two people on the chat tonight because of supreme prickness. Um, let's have a look at this one. This, when did this drop? March the 9th so not that long ago okay look at this from luxury bunkers to tactical vehicles ultra rich are preparing for the big one i'm not joking i can pull up at least 50 news articles this year all about billionaires building bunkers all over the place why why all of the sudden billionaires have probably been building bunkers for donkey's years but why is it in the last three or four months that all the mainstream have been covering all of this stuff look at this a 100 million dollar compound in hawaii mr zuck we all like that guy don't we is as about as welcome as clap that guy but it's not just him there's loads of others who are building these bunkers all over the place i'm not joking i'm really not joking all you have to do is just literally go into your internet search engine and type in um, billionaire bunkers search this year. And you'll be surprised the amount of articles. It's just insane. You're going to go through 60 different articles and all different reports and different figures, different people, different areas, different bunkers. It's crazy. It is literally the talk of the town about all of this madness that's coming down the road and all of the bunkers and all of the obscene amounts of wealth look at that it starts from two hundred and eighty five thousand dollars bloody hell really this is just a vehicle yeah that's over a quarter of a million quid what you're seeing here yeah how many people have a have have got that sort of money just to play around and buy a vehicle because they're going to feel safe in it crazy i'm not joking the obscene amount of wealth is just insane so like i'm saying all you have to do is go into your search engine and just type in billionaire bunkers for the last three months and you're going to be inundated with all of this stuff i'm not joking who yeah here's a random one for you if you are um one of the elders who support this channel fair play good to see you guys project noah's ark who remembers that 1977 i would have been six years old when that project was released in america some of you watching right now are going to say in the chat i remember a project noah's ark when it was leaked um in 77 okay these things have happened in the past of course they have so another one which was um this this is on x this is the very latest of 24 minutes ago 
okay even 24 minutes ago whilst we've been doing this live stream the metro which is one of london's biggest newspapers have absolutely just published a post whilst we've been online from pools to bowling alleys and a flaming moat inside the bunkers where billionaires will ride out the apocalypse this happened look 24 minutes ago i am not pulling your pisser boys and girls the stuff is being talked about even as we speak that's just a lot of bikers having fun fair play but no one hour ago here we go i believe the second passing of saturn will lead to a collision event either atmospheric or physical either way um all life on earth will die very good um hiding in bunkers underground wouldn't save you so yeah this stuff is being talked about all over the place this is just recent okay now look at this we just spoke about this cell phone outage food and water warning nasa missiles being shot and it's being called serpent deity i am not joking i've already covered this cern is being fired up that's true the national guard are being deployed that's true and to expect power outages announced on mainstream media that is true all of this what you're seeing here is 100 percent true it is not bullshit. like we said noah's ark here we go this is true historic in early 1977 the president of us mr carter announced a few details of a top secret pentagon project named noah's ark it's supposedly a system of some 96 bunkers and bolt holes which have been established at various places on or near the earth to house approximately 6,500 key officials in case of a nuclear war we could read on and on and on but look i'm saying this stuff's being pushed out there now all of these weird things are coming down the road all of these billionaires are building bunkers what about the other stuff the pre-programming that if you weren't here on friday you would um you're not going to realize probably but there was a film released on netflix called leave the world behind now how many watching this have heard anything about that film and i apologize i do realize not everyone has netflix i haven't got it personally someone i know has it and i saw it on there i've only ever seen netflix i think once in my life and it was leave the world behind because i was told by a really good friend of mine i should watch it there's a lot of hidden stuff in there and i did awesome we got a few people um veronica um lone wolf has watched it um sharma crazy life so yes we got a few people who have seen it so you know what i'm talking about that film was absolutely loaded with pre-programming stuff who remembers the crazy spanish woman when the guy was trying to go out and get supplies and find out what was going on and this woman just stopped him in the road and he pulled over and she was speaking spanish it was american he didn't have a clue what she was talking about guess what someone's translated it and it turns out that she was saying the airplanes are spraying red mist everyone is disappearing dying there was planes falling out the sky electric vehicles driving all by themselves crashing out of control it's a weird film and you know one of the craziest things when you look at that film is i would guess around 80 percent maybe more of that entire film every single scene had lots of blue in it now my partner's an artist and she told me blue is a color that you use to communicate so where else have we seen the color blue when they are communicating where else have we seen it who remembers this for well, the global business community the top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate it is disinformation and misinformation exactly our wonderful best friends in the world the world economic forum 
absolutely use blue as their main color. Why? Because in psychology terms, blue is the best out of all of the colors. If you are going to communicate in some way, that's what they used. So that film was done very, very carefully. If you've not seen it, leave the world behind. The strangest thing is it was produced by the Obamas. Yeah, those two guys. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Is that a conspiracy theory? Hmm, really? Well, if you haven't seen it, try and watch it. If you can't, if you haven't got it, find someone who's got Netflix, go around there and watch it. I advise that you do. It's a very interesting film, and it's very telling. In that film, there was a prepper who was prepped. Everyone was falling apart and going haywire. These guys knocked on his doors and like, nah. This is me and my family, my shit, piss off, pretty much. And that would be my attitude too. Anyone comes knocking on my door, nah. Sorry, you should have prepped. You've got your own to look out for. Sort it out yourself. So there you go. Not only that, you've got a new film coming up really soon. And um, there we go. I'm going to show it to you now on the share screen if you don't um, know what I'm talking about. It's this one. This is going to be dropped in the next two weeks, okay? Hence, all of these things are coming together all at the same time. It's crazy. This film here, Civil War. Yes. All of these things that you are seeing here, forget about all this bullshit Marvel crap. Right, it's not that at all. It's this film here. Interesting. They got Barrett like fifties up there. Snipers, big time. So this um, film, like I say, Civil War, is going to be dropping real soon. And don't forget, leave the world behind. Um, was aired for the first time publicly just before Christmas. So relatively speaking, a very short time of these two poignant films being released. Now, I would hasten to add um, when the film was finally completed, what day the film was officially released. I would like to put money behind it that the dates of those releases have a lot to do with astrology. Now, before you start going, what was he talking about? If you don't already know or you haven't thought about this before, everything which comes out is always ritualistic. Rituals. Things are created, started, finished, released on certain dates, on certain times for a reason. Now, it takes a lot of study to understand why all of these things are very side real. Okay, And I appreciate not everyone is going to know anything about this stuff. But when you look into certain songs, when they do rituals on them, and then you release them on certain dates and times to do with the moon, the planetary alignments, I'm not joking. If you think nothing's going on, nothing's sinister, just look at every single ceremony, in other words, ritual of the Olympics, any major sporting event. What about the American Super Bowl, the halftime show? Look at all of the crazy rituals that are performed. The stuff that's going on in the Grammys, the Golden Globes, anything where there's going to be a big physical audience and moreover, a virtual audience out there. That's what they want. They need participants to give energy to that ritual to promote the idea. In turn, bring it into reality in the near future. That's exactly what we are going to be seeing with all of this stuff around in, surrounding the eclipse. You are not going to be able to understand the levels of change that will start happening from the eclipse, which is the 8th of April. Guess what? Eight days from now, just over a week. I've already done two videos about the eclipse now, lots of deep dives. And there was one thing in there which I'll come up with, which I've not seen anyone else do online. If you want to watch that, check out my last live stream about the eclipse. And you're going to be looking at stuff which no one else has talked about. And probably I would like to guess that there's going to be more info between now and right up to the eclipse, which is going to need to be talked about and understood. 
because the more that we can prepare for all of this crazy crap coming down the road, the better our chances. And it's not going to cost us billions like these billionaire brain cell losers, okay? It's crazy. So that's the pre-programming with the film section. It's all got its part to play, okay? Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Like I say, they really do believe that they can cheat death. So they've got all of this money, they've got all of this influence, they've got all of this security, all of this power and influence. So they're probably going to feel pretty untouchable compared to Joe who works at the factory on minimum wage with three kids. Okay? They're really going to think they got ahead of the game. But without intuition and a lot of up there, they won't get very far. Based upon our friend who done that um, whistleblowing stuff, who was the insider we heard about earlier, some of these billionaires don't sound that smart, do they? Even though they've got all of this money, maybe they got lucky in Bitcoin or whatever it was, it doesn't mean to say they're intelligent. And also, it doesn't mean that if you are a graduate from university and you've got a full lot of A stars, that doesn't mean you're intelligent either. Look at the definition of intelligence. It's nothing to do with grades. It's nothing to do with financial wealth. It is not. There's intelligent people out there watching this right now. So how do they think they can survive death? Because basically what me and my partner was talking about earlier, they are scared of dying. That's it. Because they are so hooked into material world with money, influence, power, and all of that sort of stuff, they would hate to lose it because it's taken them lots of blood sweat and tears to gain all of that stuff but you know what's life all about really health and happiness and learning and developing that's my take on it all if you want to fast track through life gaining as much money and as wealth and as power as possible you're not really living are you um you're probably being a twat it's probably what you're being because you're missing all those opportunities to really um experience rich real quality life like the guy said earlier if you go out for um, a memorable a memorable day your son or your daughter's got a sports day at school leave the phone at home go there and experience it through your eyes not through a phone or a lens enjoy the experience rather than digitalizing your experience i'm not joking because once those key amazing beautiful moments of life have passed you can't go back and do them again it doesn't matter if you've got 700 billion dollars in your bank account you can't go back in time and do it again no one can no one can it doesn't matter how wealthy or smart you are once those moments have gone they've gone so what else do they say they want to upload their consciousness into the cloud wow so just before they're going to slip away and probably start again because they haven't learned bugger all, they'll be reborn again and get to do all this shit again because they failed to learn or failed to grow. And that's why most of us feel like we've been here before. Most of us, we get deja vu. We have been here before and we keep coming back. Why? Because we don't learn. Now, lots of us are appearing to actually be learning and growing, developing and evolving. So who knows? When our time comes, we probably go on to another level. If you haven't learned jack shit, you're going to start all over again. Your memory will be erased. And you might get your deja vu now and again going forward. But these guys, they seem like they think they can upload all of their conscious thoughts, experiences, everything into the cloud. So when they go, they can get hooked up into some computer and carry on living. Believe it or not, lots of them actually believe that's what they're going to do. And what did we talk about earlier about cryo, about being frozen in time and going through to the future because they're billionaires and they're loaded. And by the time that they get thawed out and they get brought back into whatever, obviously they're going to miss lots of X, Y, and Z moments in history. They're probably hoping and believing that the world's going to be um, utopia. Everything's going to be nice and clean and simple and painless and fluffy. And they're going to be brought back to life and they're going to live again in that time that's another thing which some of these crazy billionaires want it's nuts b 
because they are basically waiting for technological advancement to be ready at such a place where they can be hitting the ground running into the future. We've seen films about that. I mean, who remembers Elon Musk talking about Mars? It's bizarre how these billionaires think they are so arrogant and rude that they could literally get as much money, power and wealth as they possibly can to give themselves as much fighting chance to live forever or to make sure that they're always going to survive. Because if this planet implodes or goes crazy because we've misused it or whatever else and they want to live in Mars and all of that nonsense, what about, how about all of their wealth? They only take what they actually need and all the rest of it, they give to other people so we can all have a decent standard of living rather than struggling swimming around in the bottom of life cesspit because at the end of the day that's what all of these one percent powerful evil disgusting bastards want us to be like they don't want us to have anything so they want all of the bunkers they want to be safe they don't want us finding their bunkers getting in there and ruining their lavish little lifestyle well guess what like the whistleblower guy said earlier on in this live stream how are they going to protect their facility? Do you remember when he said about he's got Navy SEALs, a dozen, 12 Navy SEALs on the payroll at standby 24-7 with helicopters fueled and ready to go? Do you know how much that's going to cost? Insane money. And when they get there and they're going to be patrolling and defending that bunker, an interesting point he made. How are those Navy SEALs going to be paid? Knowing full well that these Navy SEALs have left loved ones, family, friends behind in order to work for this greedy billionaire guy. Knowing full well, probably, that money's worthless. Yeah, how are they going to pay him? In food? Hmm, what's going to happen? In that scenario, I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. The 12 Navy SEAL guys, they're going to concoct a plan. The first thing they're going to do is to take the billionaire out, okay? is a useful eater he has got no more value anymore he'll be taken out pretty quickly because i'd like to think that the billionaire hasn't got a shred of training compared to a navy seal then you've got 12 seals what's going to happen then is it's probably going to be a power struggle and it's going to end up with one or two coming out on top so then what the navy seal on his own is going to have this bunker all of his food and everyone else is gone well, what a lonely, weird experience that is. We've already seen films like this. Who remembers I Am Legend, where he's walking around and no one else is around? Hmm. Yeah, who would actually like that? It would be a bit lonely and a bit weird. And you're going to be on tenterhooks because there probably is someone out there or something out there. So this is the pre-programming crap that they've been put into our minds for years now. And who knows what's going to happen? Hopefully nothing happens and we can carry on, stand prepared. If anything does happen, we're going to have more of a chance than anyone else. Then we're not going to get our way of life interrupted or altered to the extent where it's just a struggle to survive. Only those who don't prep are going to be in that scenario, pretty much. So that comes back to the same old thing. What are the most important things to have should we face a societal collapse? What's the most important things that we need to have should or when this happens? What's the most important things? Well, the will to survive is a good one, a really important one. Um, intuition, absolutely on point. If you've got no gut feeling, you ain't going to last very long. You're going to make the wrong decision. Something's going to happen that's it you're done already you're going to need to have good quality kit and equipment which isn't going to break and fall apart because let's face it there's so much bullshit cheap made in china crap aimed at this survivalist prepper market which won't last five minutes it won't last five minutes you need to get stuff which is going to last because let me tell you this don't think for a second if your tent or your tarp or your camouflage trousers starts falling apart because you've got the cheapest, crappest ones you can get your hands on. Don't think you can go to the shop and complain and get a new pair or a new tent. It's not going to happen. You're going to need to make do. And the more cheap, basic, crappy things that you've got and they keep on failing, the more 
stress you're going to be going through on top of already untold stress. You're going to be tired. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be walking loads. You're going to get injuries. The weather's going to be crap. All of these things. And then the last thing you want on top of all of that, as well as a possible slow burn mental breakdown, is all of your kit falling apart because you've got the cheapest crap. Just saying. Get the best that you can afford. Make it a priority. There's nothing worse than having a backpack on, which the whole thing costs like 50 quid or $50 for the whole backpack and everything in it, only to find in week two, half of it's ripped, broken, fallen apart, come unstitched, leaked. So you've got all of those problems on top of everything else. And it could be the difference between whether you make it or not. It's that simple. It's that bloody simple. Bar triple items. That is probably one of the most best pieces of advice I can give to anyone watching my videos. Does, you know, as well as you know, making sure that your mental state is going to be okay to handle all of these changes and your intuition's on point and you've got good quality kit and equipment, please, for God's sake, make sure that you've got enough food. Because without food, you ain't doing much. I've actually tried a real experiment. I didn't eat one single thing for four whole days nothing has anyone else done that probably not that many let me tell you this from experience on day four you ain't walking anywhere you're going to be on your ass you're going to be lying down in bed because you're knackered you've got no energy without food i'm not joking you've got all of these idiots who write these survival manuals the body can last 20 days without food all right then go for it Let's see how you get on, on on day 20. Yeah. And then if that does happen and you do make it, I'll give you one really important piece of advice. When you start to eat again, start off really, really small. I mean, really small. Almost to the point that eating half of a grape, if you haven't eaten for 20 days, could make you throw up big time. You've got to do small baby steps for quite a while before your body gets reintroduced to intaking food again. I'm not joking. I've tried it. I know people who have done it. You need to try these things in peacetime rather than find out that you're screwed over in an emergency. You've got time and opportunity to try these things. Friggin' try it. See how you get on. Some people will fare better than others. I'm just telling you on day four, I was shagged out. I was absolutely done. Really difficult to get motivated. Really difficult to go outside to go and chop firewood to keep warm to go and purify water to do those tasks when you haven't eaten for four days nah i'm not joking i can't see many people making it actually just by those things so with that being said food is so important now i do realize that the really expensive food the stuff that's freeze dried that lasts for 30 40 years does cost a lot of money why does it cost a lot of money because the energy and the time to turn food into freeze-dried food is very, very expensive. It's going to take 24 hours of a machine using lots of energy turned on that's going to freeze-dry your food. But once it's done, that food can be stored away in a cool, dry place in the right container for a minimum of 30 years. 30 years. Yeah, store it away in the bunker. That's what lots of these billionaires have already done. They've done it. It's all organized. It's all labeled up they're good to go they're just waiting and then off they go to their lovely little bunker sorted but for you or i it's not going to be affordable for you or i i can't really afford to go out and get free dry food i'm like everyone else i go out and buy tins of food i go out and get pasta and rice my advice if you're going to be doing that is get them when they're on offer if you're in a supermarket or it's discounted get them because let me tell you this rice and pasta will last indefinitely if you free, if you vacuum seal them with an oxygen absorber and you keep them in the, um, a cool, dry place, they're going to last for donkey's years. Oh, I'm not making it up. So my advice is stock up on pasta and rice. Why? Because all you really need from that moment on is protein. So if you love going hunting, trapping small game, shooting birds, whatever it is, and you feel confident that you can get that all of the time, great. Okay, if you're not confident, you're not skilled, um, stock up on food, uh, meat, sorry, because 
not everyone is going to start learning to hunt and be successful it takes a big skill a lot of time a lot of learning to do stalking knowing wind direction smells sounds where to put snares why when and how all of these things need to be not just understood but well versed in advance i.e learn it now or well, you've got peace time on your hands rather than sitting there watching match of the day going to the pub getting bladdered or talking bollocks in a nightclub or whatever it is how about stop doing that and start learning important stuff because like i say no one's going to come and do it for you it's not going to be like that you need to learn it yourself so storing a lot of meat is a good thing now personally um things like corned beef there's a lot of fat and a lot of salt and it's stored in that tin in a way vacuum pressurized that that's going to be fine for ages how long god knows it's going to be a long time way more than anything else you can probably get spam again meat that's got fat and salt in a tin cool dry place your biggest enemy for storing stuff like that is damp anything that's damp or wet you will get rust on that tin but when it starts it's going to grow and when it breaches the inside of that container from then on you are taking a risk okay any tins that have got dents on them use them sooner rather than later okay any sort of crease in that metal over time and you get rust or damp in there it's going to perish your food and look into the word botulism it's serious okay, i'm not joking the problem with that is you can't see it or you can't taste it and you can't smell it before you know it you're really ill and it's going to happen when a time when there's no doctors okay Another thing is medication, first aid. There's so much stuff we can talk about, about prepping and everything else. But it does appear that these billionaires have just woken up and they're fast tracking to bunkers. But here's the problem for them. They've got no experience. They don't think like us preppers. They're new to it. They think they can spend their way through a crisis. It doesn't work like that. You've got to be smart. The longer we spend on prepping learning skills the better because the people who don't they're the first no matter how wealthy they are are, are going to be the first to fall by the wayside absolutely 100 percent let's drop into the chat well we got 1230 people well, that's pretty cool let the games begin no i don't want to see it to be honest Thank you, darling. Yeah, if you can hit the thumbs up, it really helps. Spot on. Worm powder. <laughs> Dude, that's so wrong. Well, yeah, already they're starting to put um, cricket flour into baking products in food already. Did you know that? Um, Aldi is a company which is already doing this. So if you are buying... Um, stuff like pancake mixes um cake mixes bread mixes that sort of thing look at the ingredients first there's certain words that they use to disguise crickets but they are absolutely doing it okay oh wow thank you we got some <laughs> i just realized you guys are awesome uh, thank you to david thank you very much indeed who is um, a member i believe um, he's over there in michigan usa happy easter and he enjoyed the video of the 10 mile walk yes i uh, remember it well thank you for that david and that charity walk was great we've um, raised well over 1100 pound for that veterans charity so you guys are awesome um we got john um you couldn't make it up i know i know i'm not joking this stuff is actually happening billionaires are doing this yeah why if there's nothing wrong nothing's going to happen why would they spend all of that time and money doing that why hmm um thank you to jess over in oz thank you appreciate that and petru um jay dyer here on youtube covered all the elites writings on what kind of future they want wow yeah i'm not surprised and you know thank you for that petri by the way um the georgia guidestones if you don't know what i'm talking about that's quite prevalent now um john thank you for that super sticker sir 
awesome and i think we have um martin yes thank you for that over on paypal behind the scenes um really appreciate that guys you brilliant people i'm not joking but yeah that stuff let's have a look got so many of them now here we go who remembers the um georgia guidestones um if you've got no idea what i'm talking about um just do a, a google search georgia guidestones Oh, thank you, Robert, on PayPal. Awesome. Um, thank you very much for supporting the channel and getting this information out. So the Georgia Guidestones. Let's see what has been ringed on the next slide. Here we go. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Yeah, that's pretty much that sort of um, ethos that the elites, if you want to call them that, I don't like calling them the elites, they're not elite to me, maybe to themselves, but 500 million, that's half of 1 billion. There's 8 billion of us. So we're led to believe if that's true. Right here, right now on this round planet. Or if you believe it's flat, believe it's flat. It's up to you. I don't care. I don't give a toss if it's square. I don't care if it's bumpy, flat, smooth. Couldn't give a rat's ass. In my experience, this is a simulation. I don't care anyway. But 500 million people. That's not many when you think about it. Now, one of the common most misconceptions there are going right now is if you leave and live in a city, your mindset is probably been um, tuned into thinking that there isn't much room on the planet for lots of people. Let me tell you this. Since I've moved from a heavily densely populated urban environment, and I now live in a remote rural location. I've bugged out, as it were. There is so much more space outside cities, you would not believe it. And in fact, here is a very interesting fact indeed. Let me just get it up so I can um, express a point here. Right, okay. Now, I want you to think about population and people okay and how busy cities are etc you look at the map here of united states of america that area there is called texas okay it's the biggest state by far in america you can see it it's huge so texas there it is with its subdivisional sectors inside there Quite interesting how it's very, very square. So, yeah, Texas, okay? Apparently, according to scientists and calculations, if this is to be believed, that if you got every single human being on this entire planet and we stood next to each other, side by side, everyone will fill Texas and the rest of the whole world would be empty let that sink in when they say the place is being overpopulated now the way of um getting people to believe that we are being overpopulated is to jam them into a small area with lots lots of people their mentality eventually will conclude that the whole planet is being overpopulated it's too busy there's not enough room it sucks well guess what spend time out of the sea travel the countryside if you live in Lands End, go to John O'Groats. You won't believe the amount of empty space there is out there. Take a train, take a road trip, whatever. Any of you watching um, in America, let us know what you think. If you go coast to coast, tell them. It's not downtown New York. It really is not, is it? It's so empty out there. Even my friend Jason, Jason Brashears from Archaics, shout out to the big fella, he's done the same. He's gone miles and miles and miles spent days traveling of just emptiness there's nothing out there's so much space it's crazy so they want us to believe that there's no room 
the reason is because they are literally cramming people into these little areas and watching it implode what am i talking about social cohesion social unrest overpopulation what about the demographics of different migrants entering the game how does that feel what about japan yeah 99 percent of every living person in japan is national japanese 99 percent only one percent of everyone living in japan is a foreigner if you if you get offended by the term foreigner tough couldn't give a toss it is what it is it's just a word to describe someone who is not a national of that country it's as simple as that it's not offensive it's just a word get over it all right so what we need to see is the same mentality which has been adopted by japan globally yeah exactly that's what we should be seeing all of this globalization bullshit which they are trying to sell us is a good idea it's not really working is it all of the oh is anyone living luton do you know what it's like living in luton right now if you're a white national and you was born and bred and you've lived in luton for 60 years now you are 100 percent a minority believe that it's true i'm not a racist i'm not making it up it's factually correct go and check it out if you don't believe me luton is unbelievable the amount of social decline of that part of the world near london is unbelievable and it's not just there some of you guys watching here in the uk will absolutely concur that it's most cities around the entire united kingdom and i would probably guess america is pretty much the same any city in america has had such a massive influx of migration it is absolutely ruined society in my opinion this is all by design this isn't no accident this is true this is exactly what's been going on and it's only going to get worse excuse me um sarah louise um on paypal thank you really appreciate that you guys support the channel really rocks it's brilliant i'm not joking it seriously helps more than you believe actually dave um all right dave good to see you mate uh, mass formation psychosis exactly exactly it's the globalist weapon of choice and to be fair with that combined with the media outlets which of course they have um, a big part to play that's their mouthpiece that's how they get this information out there that's how they form opinions that's how they alter mindsets of the masses mass psychosis pretty much is on point well done dave it's absolutely true um, um someone says the jedi it's all fear mongering i don't know about fear mongering i would say um it's pushing people into a corner expecting them to react and <laughs> tony blair yeah tony blair has a very very small part to play believe it or not there is way loads more people over the last 300 years possibly um who have big parts to play into why and how society is what it is now which is one of the reasons why these billionaires have had it up to here they see what's coming to the road they're doing bunkers right now it's true like we saw the insider when he spoke out earlier on you know how are these people going to defend these bunkers when the likes of us come looking for them and we will because when you look at the basic needs of a human being to survive food shelter and medical they're the three things okay if one of those things isn't there it's very very difficult so when you've exhausted all of your supplies i.e your local supermarket will be completely stripped bare within 24 hours of a major event going down it will be forget going there don't go there during those 24 hours if you value your life because you can easily lose it you're dealing with very desperate violent people yeah that's pretty much the bones being stripped and cleaned we're talking real talk now when it goes down yeah you are going to be better off staying in your home working to your plan wherever that's going to be whether you're going to leave your home and go to somewhere safer whether you're going to stay in your home it's ups absolutely down to you my advice is the first 24 hours do not go outside unless you really really have to 
it won't be safe and forget the police there won't be any no there won't be any no one's gonna save your ass no one you can kneel down and pray all you like if you've got to go you've got to go at the end of the day you need to do something for yourself what are you going to do when people get desperate they do desperate things and when people are hungry oh my god how many of you right now if you get a bit hungry you get what's called hangry i'll get it sometimes right honey <laughs> i do sometimes so yeah you get like um tired and you get hungry at the same time and you become irritable lots of us get that it's like a natural instinct it's like your body saying to you right if you want to be happy again and if you want to be fulfilled go and eat something there's a good fella it's true it's a hundred percent natural mechanism so what happens when that hunger and tide gets stretched and stretched now any of you soldiers who have had combat experience will know exactly what i'm talking about yeah we didn't get that ration drop we haven't slept in days we've walked way further than we was told we needed to you're going to get exhaust exhaustion fatigue and that when you got that with a hive mentality i large groups of angry people do not go anywhere near that environment do not it's a seriously life risking thing to do do not do it you're going to be much safer at home making your plan working away securing your home or whatever you need to do just don't go out there okay because these people once they've exhausted their local supplies of food, weaponry, medications, all of the pharmacies will be stripped, just like food. People are going to need pain relief in some point. Um, they want to get high because they can't handle it. Absolutely, the pharmacies will be destroyed. They'll be ransacked. So when you go past that and then you realize, I've got no food, I've got no medication, you're going to need to eat. If you hurt yourself, you're going to need to repair yourself. What are you going to do? You're going to become one of the others where you're going to be going out there, putting your life at risk, potentially taking someone else's life to get what you need. Imagine that with 8 billion people. How funny is that going to be? It's not going to be funny at all. Of course not. So we need to do whatever we feel we need to do to make sure we don't end up with the masses that have got nothing prepared. Because it's the people who don't prepare are going to be the ones who are going to come unstuck. It is what it is. So um, I would appreciate it very, very much if you can. Please share the link to this video on your social media platforms. So we're talking WhatsApp, Facebook, um, Twitter, Telegram, all of those groups. I'm not joking. The video seems to survive just if that sort of thing happens. And I've done it on other videos. It's really quick and easy to do. Copy the link. Boom. Done. OK, there is an email address right underneath this um, video if you want to send me an email about the things i've been talking about um i will be getting a newsletter out very very soon possibly tuesday updating everyone the merch thing is still ongoing i'm trying to get it linked up with t-mail it's becoming a nightmare but i'm still going to be checking it out okay the level two membership on my youtube channel um doesn't look like very far away from being launched so stay tuned for at least eight interview videos they are all going to come up um, one at a time, day by day, on my YouTube channel, 20 minutes. The rest of them will be available under the members section, the level two members section, and it's going to be massive. There's already eight two-hour interviews with um, world-famous DJs on there. We've had lots of good people on there. Jason from Archaics has done two. I've had Neil McCoy Ward and many, many, many others. So they are just literally queued up waiting. So please... Um, stay tuned for those because they are going to be dropping within the next two weeks okay um that seems to be there with the mailing list um thank you to pam yes if you go underneath you can join the mailing list it's really simple you just put a name and an email address it doesn't even have to be your real name make up an email address that way i can get loads of information and links as well to very important and sometimes time sensitive critical information to get out there because one things issue that i've had before in the past is when i get shadow banned i can't reach people which makes it really difficult to do this as a job so all of you guys who donate i'm seriously so grateful you wouldn't believe it and everyone who supports me will share my videos it's just astonishing but not only that the amount of people who take part in the live chat is amazing this 
community that we're growing here is in, is really cool. We are all learning and helping each other, and we are all becoming more and more aware of what's going on around us. But to be honest, we are much better off and safer in a community rather than people being on their own. Here, you are not an individual, you are part of a team. A very, very special team has taken me since 2012 to build this community. And you guys who are in it, who are members, who support, honestly, you guys rock, seriously. So everyone who's commented, I really, really appreciate everything. Um, the new members that have turned up um, day before yesterday, you know who you are. The donations behind the scene on PayPal has been awesome. And you guys who are the moderators are insanely cool. Well, I'm not joking. You are fantastic. So until the next time we meet, you guys take care. Thanks for watching. Stay funky.